Welcome to the lecture series on network security mechanism and model. At the end of this session, students will be able to recall and recite the goals of security services, describe security mechanism, narrate the model for network security. In the previous lecture, we have already discussed that the security sub architecture for OSI describes network security in three aspects, that is security attack, security mechanism, and security services. We have already discussed about security attack and security services in our previous lecture. In today's session, we will be focusing on the security mechanism and network model. What is the role of security mechanism? It is basically a feature designed to detect, prevent or recover from a security attack. That is, when an attack has happened on the data it is basically aimed to detect and recover from that attack or rather before happening of the attack it should detect and prevent and recover in the worst case from the attack no single mechanism that will support all the services required it means that see the attack could be on confidentiality it could be on integrity it could be on availability so there is no single mechanism that will ensure that the confidentiality is ensured the integrity is ensured or there is non repudiation however one particular element underlines many of the security mechanisms in use that is the cryptographic techniques Hence, our focus is on this topic. So, in order to see that, we have ensured the confidentiality, integrity, non-repudiation, availability. We focus that there is one such thing that is called as cryptographic techniques, which can provide us one-stop solution. Therefore, we focus on the security mechanisms that involve cryptography. Now, the X.800 defines security mechanism into two broad categories. One is the spe specific security mechanisms and the other is called as the pervasive security mechanism. The spe specific security mechanism means that they may be incorporated into appropriate protocol layer in order to provide some of the OSI security services. Whereas the pervasive security mechanisms are those that are not specific to any OSI security service or protocol layer. We now discuss in detail about what are the specific security mechanisms that are listed in X.800. Enciphermint, Digital Signature, Access Control, Data Integrity, Authentication Exchange, Traffic Padding, Routing Control and Notarization. Now, first to begin with, Enciphermint. Now, this encipherment is basically use of mathematical alg algorithms for encrypting and decrypting the message so as to ensure there is confidentiality, integrity, non-repudiation of the data. There are various encipherment processes available and depending on the requirements, the users over the network can go for it. Next important thing, digital signature. As we are all aware, that we sign the documents whenever we want to send it to someone. So what does that sign convey? The sign is an assurance that it is the person whom is to who is the certifying authority. In the same way, over network, we need to make a digital sign. And how is this digital sign done? This is done by appending the data or a cryptographic tr transformation of a unit of data that allows the recipient of the data unit to prove the source and integrity of the data unit and protect against any forgery. So that is basically a digital signature. Access control, a variety of mechanisms that enforce access rights to resources. Now you have seen that the administrator has some different rights whereas the students have different rights, the users have different rights. Whenever you try to launch a freeware or a software, you are not able, to, it's for a valid for a particular period of time. So all these mechanisms which are embedded that are called as access control. Next, data integrity. Data integrity, basically a variety of mechanisms used to assure that the integrity of the data unit or stream of data is 
kept assured over a passage of time it says that there is no a uh, change in the data the contents have not been modified next is authentication ex exchange a mechanism intended to ensure the identity of an entity by means of information exchange now most of you must have uh, be doing the online payment transaction you have that concept of otp the otp comes to your mobile number what is that that is also a security mechanism which is trying to authenticate you through your registered mobile number and then you are entering that otp again it is encrypted and then the transaction moves ahead now that is basically authentication exchange the next is routing control the routing control enables selection of a particular particular physically secure route for certain data and allows routing changes especially where a breach of security is suspected now it tries to map a particular route and through which all the data is sent knowing that there are some suspicions there are some intrusions that can happen over here and the last is notarization notarization is basically the use of a trusted third party to assure certain properties of data exchange we can have a trusted third party wherein we can assume that through him the data will reach securely now the next is pervasive security mechanism as i have already discussed they are not specific to any particular osi security service or a protocol layer now the first in that is a trusted functionality that which is perceived to be correct with respect to some criteria example as established by security policy now trusted functionality you give to some people a task why because you have a trust on them and therefore that trusted functionality basically like consider again the example of otp over here otp assures that you are that trusted authentic receiver who is expected actually doing the transaction then security labels here the marking bound to a resource which may be a data unit that names or designates the security attributes of that resource now that is basically a security label event detection now this is most popularly and uh, very commonly aware like event detection if there is any violation you have an alarm you have pop up message you have notifications where if you see the unit, the user or the person on the machine comes to know that something wrong has happened now security audit trials and security recovery now what are security audit trials now we have a log of activities that runs at the back of for every computer that is a network so there are some anomaly detection practices that are embedded into the network and they try to make an audit like of a particular person on the network and they calculate the threshold of that particular anomaly detection so these basically are pervasive security mechanism now moving ahead this is a model for network security security aspects come into play when it is necessary or desirable to protect the information transformation from an opponent who may pre who may actually present a threat to confidentiality authentication data integrity and non reputation all the techniques for providing security have basically two main component if you see this diagram there are sender and the receiver and here the two most important components are the security related transformation security related transformation on the information is to be sent example includes the encryption of the message which scrambles the message so that it is unreadable by the opponent and the addition of a code based on content of message which can be used to verify the identity of the sender and the secret information basically is the information shared by two principals and it is hoped unknown to the opponent an example is an encryption key used in conjunction with the transformation to scramble the message before transmission and unscramble it on reception using this model requires us to design a suitable algorithm for security transformation generate secret keys that is information used by the algorithm develop methods to distribute and share the secret information specify protocol enabling the principals to use the transformation and secret information for security so this is basically the model for network security now 
This is also the model for network security over here, which shows that there are different uh, uh, data processes software that are stored on the information system. And there is an access required to these data and resources. So how can this be protected? So it can be protected by the gatekeeper functions. And here the opponents could be anyone. It could be a human cracker, hacker, an intruder, a software, maybe a virus, a worm or trison. So what needs to be done is to be ensured that the gatekeeper function like the password mechanisms, the firewall are examples which I am just stating needs to be kept strong. So using this model again requires us to select appropriate gatekeeper functions to identify user. So basically the gatekeeper will allow only the legitimate users to enter and proper action will be taken. Trusted computer systems may be useful to helpful to implement this model. Now I request the students to pause the video for some time and think and answer the question. Encipherment and digital signatures are pervasive security mechanisms. Options true or false? False. Basically, it is a specific security mechanism. This is the list of specific security mechanisms and pervasive security mechanisms. Moving ahead to the next question. All techniques for providing security have two components. Security related transformation, trusted third party authentication and secret information. Your options. Correct answer is all of the, that is A and B, security related transformation and secret information. The last question, which is not an objective of network security. The answer is D. These are the references for referring for additional content. And thank you for your patient hearing.